Hello, Hambini fans, and welcome to another episode of Hambini Reams. In today's episode, we have the first ever specialized bike. Making its debut is this bright orange specialized Ven. It's rim brake because you know progress is overrated. It's a 56 centimeter and it's made from carbon. So I'll piss a guy called Reggie off. Old school stem, none of that futuristic integration bollocks. I think it's a 2018 model, but if you are fortunate enough to memorize specialized back catalog, do feel free to show off in the comments. Forgot to say it's finished in this glorious Asbo orange, which is hard to miss, but ideal for my local dogging side. It's got Durace front brakes, Durace back brakes, Durace gear levers, Durace front mech, and Ultegra rear mech. And I don't normally focus on seat clamps, but this one's quite spectacular. It's got four bolts when probably one would do. And right here, it says designed in Morgan Hill, California, which is like the cycling equivalent of saying, I do not have AIDS. Now, overall, this bike is no garage queen. It has been used and that's the kind of bike I like to see. So we've got a few little scuffs here, um, a bit more around here as a little tear right there and a bit more wear and tear around here. But having said all that, the chap has looked after it. So why is it here? Well, he took it to his local bike shop. They ummed and ahed at it, run out of talent, and then ran out of good looks too. And then he came here with it. Giving his dues, he brought it all the way up from the south of England, which is actually closer to Paris and Brussels than it is to my house. So he was just pedaling along, minding his own business, when the factory fitted BB cup, which is here, decided it had enough and decided to exit the frame. This is a bit of a specialized party trick. If you can catch it early, then you might be able to glue it back in with a bit of Delrin or some Devcon or something like that. Uh, but that's really a bit of a sticking plaster fix. You really need to get a, a bit of a sort of thread together type design in there. In this case, he rode it for ages and it's chewed itself a nice little gouge into the bottom bracket. So this is the, the drive side, that's the good side, and it is somewhere around 46. So there's nothing really wrong with that end. It's a bit oval, but that's about it. And this is the non-drive side. So this is the side that got chewed up, spun round, spat round. 46.3, that isn't even the smallest one. I'm just holding the vernier steady there so you can gauge how much it's spun. So you're taking like 0.3 of a mil out. Got my fingernail in the far side, giving it a good finger. Hopefully you can hear that, which is almost nothing. You put it on this side. It's quite noticeable. And if you look very carefully down here, it's taken so much material out, it's exposed a few voids. So normally you'd have a shell that looks like a dog bone. This bit here is nominally 46 millimeters. And this bit between here and here, in the case of this specialized, is supposed to be 61 millimeters. Now, in the case of this, on one side, I'm going to call this side the non-drive side, that isn't 46 millimeters. It's actually 46.3 millimeters, approximately. But to make life even more difficult, if you were to take a cut through here and then fold it out, what you'd find is if that's the aperture, it's not flat. So you've got maybe 46.3 there, but then over here, it might taper or might go up and down. So with the Delrin cups, it actually makes the uh, shell 42 millimeters by 68. So it's designed for 6806 bearings, which are like that. It is effectively BB30. Now, normally what I would do is I would bore all the way through, but this is quite thin and it's exposed some voids. So I don't really want to do that because if the resin's gone on holiday, I'll just make it worse. Um, and taking more material out of something that's potentially thin will only make it about as stiff as a wet sponge. 
I'll continue to finger. And this is the fix. So it is a thread together bottom bracket. Um, we've got an interference fit on the drive side, which is this side. So it comes with an index mark. And we've got a transition fit on the non-drive side because basically it's, it's it needs to slide in. We don't want to take any more, more material out of the bike frame. And it uses threads to lock it all in. Um, retaining compound does need to go in too because of what I explained before, which is the surfaces are not completely flat. And you obviously don't want to have you know, excessively high compressive stress. So a bit of thread lock isn't going to hurt either. Um, and it gives you the advantage because if you need to remove it in the future, you can just heat it up with a hairdryer and it will all go uh, loose and soft. The bearings are, well, the owner wanted sealed bearings. So he had a choice between Toyama, NTN and Fag, Scheffler. I've still got some of the old proper Japanese NTN bearings. The new ones are made in Taiwan. Um, <laughs> they're about as smooth as a cheese grater. Um, I'm being facetious. Um, so I'm using the old stock. This is the index mark. It needs to be here to align up, to, sorry, to line up. Um, it's there for angular correction or in layman's terms, it helps fix your frame's misalignment without admitting fault. This bottom bracket, the two sides of it are asymmetrical. So they are not the same diameter. The larger side, which is the non-drive side, has a bigger diameter to interface. So onto the drive side, it won't go in. But on the non-drive side, it'll just get started. This is the drive side cup. It is a, a semi-interference fit, I'll call it a, a tight transition fit. I'm gonna put that into here to get this started. I haven't faced round here because I was a bit worried that this was all going to flake off, so I've left it as it is. It is fairly flat. I've checked it. To get this going, I'm going to use a little bit of retaining compound. This is basically Loctite in all but name. Um, and then align up my index mark, which is here, with the two on the bottom of that bottom bracket. There's a, a number, so it's BL2567. So I'm going to line it up with that. There's a very small amount of retaining compound on here. Uh, we'll put that in. That's got it just started. Just pushed it in with the press and you can see there's a small gap through there. You just get an object. So there's the nib of the pencil and there's a small gap there. So I've left that slightly proud. I'm going to screw the other side in now. This is the other side. I put tape all the way around it because when I was pushing it in, I didn't want to scratch any of the chap's frame. I mean, it's not my bike, so I'll take as good a care of it as I can. In here, the bottom bracket center is not all concentric with the other side. I've had to do that to fix the alignment. I'm just going to put a little bit of thread lock on the inside so the female side of the threads doesn't need to be very much. There's also a small amount of retaining compound on the outside of this. Now we're just going to screw this in and take the tape off at the same time. side drive side there's no gap at all so flatness checks were good put the caps in cap on the non-drive side so this is supposed to be 91 millimeters from door to door and we've got 90.9 so we're not too far away 0.1 millimeters To be clear, or so there's no doubt, this bottom bracket is held in um, in, ax in the axial direction by the threads. So it threads from one side to the other. Radially, it's held in by a transition fit 
up and down, left and right. And to take out the irregularity, it's got retaining compound as well. It's not glued in. Just put a test crank in just to check it all works and there's no rubs or anything. It's got fully sealed bearings in it so it doesn't spin that well, but it's smooth and that means it's a pass. This kind of issue with the Delrin cups or plastic cups falling out of specialized frames is uh, quite common. It manifests itself typically a few years after you buy it, after the uh, resin goes slightly brittle. Um, if you do have any questions or comments, please use the comment box below. And uh, if you've got any uh, other bits or pieces, send us an email. And that is it. Um, remember to smash that like button and hit subscribe. Uh, and as always, keep buying your hairdresser. <laughs>